Okay, so here is graphing relations part two, part two of two, explaining how to graph relations like the ones that you see below here. First, let's remember our four steps of how to do this that we did uh, in the part one lesson. First thing is you wanna try to rearrange the equation so that the y is by itself on one side of the equal sign. The last lesson never had to do that. It was already by itself. Second step is once you've got the y by itself is to pick any five values for x. And if you remember, it wasn't just any five values of x. It was certain numbers that we decided um, would, be, would be the five best ones to choose. And then once you've picked each of those five values of x, you sub each of them each of those x values into the equation to find out what the y values are. So each x input gives you a certain y output. And then the table filled in uh, acts as a set of coordinates that you can graph on the graph. Okay, so let's take a look at this equation here. Graph the relation x minus y equals six. Let's look at our four steps. First, we need to rearrange the equation by getting y by itself. Um, in this part one, y was always by itself, but look here. I gave you a question where y is not by itself. We need to get this y here by itself. So let me just rewrite the equation over here. So we want to get the y by itself. Uh, a couple things we could do here. Uh, first, we should realize what's bugging the y, and it's this x. This x is bugging the y. How do you get rid of the y? Sorry, how do you get rid of this x? You're going to subtract by x. Do the same to the other side. The x is now are now gone. You're left with negative y equals 6 minus x. All right. Um, and from this point, if you remember, uh, there's two things we could do because the y is not totally by itself it has this minus sign here to get rid of this minus sign there's two things we could do we could realize that this is the same thing as y being multiplied by negative one and we have to divide both of these things by negative one or if you remember the trick the quick simple dirty trick is that if you want to change the sign of this then you need to change the sign of everything on the other side of the equal sign so I want to change the sign of this to make it positive. I have to change the sign of this to make it negative, and change the sign of that to make it positive. So either way you do it, you should end up getting y equals negative six plus x. Now, you don't have to write it that way. You can make it neater by not having a negative sign in front if that bothers you. And you could rewrite this as y equals with the x in front x that negative sign belongs to the 6 so we x minus 6 either way this is or that is your relation with the y by itself on either side of the equal sign okay step two after you've done that is to make a table of values which I just did right here table of values and pick any five values for x, our favorite five. Now, the favorite five that we picked, if you remember, were negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Remember, we chose these five because you're supposed to have an equal amount of negative numbers and positive numbers, and just so we don't have to use our brain too much, we want them to be as small as possible. So these are the smallest five numbers we can get with equal numbers um, having negative and positives. Just hang on one second. Okay, anyways. So again, there's the uh, relation figured out. The x is, or the y is by itself. We, now we picked our five values of x. We just have to sub them in. So, um, I don't know, which one do you like? Like this one or that one? I like this one better. It just looks neater. So I'm going to use that equation, y equals x minus 6, and I'm going to sub my favorite 5 in there. So we start with negative 2, so for negative 2 for x, 
y equals negative 2, put it in brackets, minus 6, you're down 2, you're down 6, y is negative 8. So negative 8 is what you get for that one. Uh, let's sub negative 1 into there. Now watch what I'm going to do, just because I can. I'm not going to have to rewrite all this stuff, I can just erase what I need. I'm going to sub negative 1 into there now. Obviously the answer is going to change. I'm down 1, I'm down 6, I'm down 7. If you used a pencil and eraser, you can do the same thing. Uh, and so yeah, so when uh, x is negative 1, y is negative 7. Let's do that same paper saving thing. Now instead of negative 1, let's put 0 into there. 0 minus 6 is negative 6. So when x is 0, y is negative 6. Now we can see the pattern. We're going up by 1. Negative 8, negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4. It's filled in. Next step, we got to graph it. And let's take a look at our graphing paper. There. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Zoom out a little bit. Okay, so it's going to look. We have negative 2, comma 8. Negative 2, comma 8. Negative 2, positive 8. So negative 2 on the x, positive 8 on the y. Alright, the second point was, so that was the first point, done. Next is negative 1, negative 7. Oops, it was negative 8, not positive 8. So I should change that negative 2 to negative 8. It was negative 2, negative 8. Most of you already know how to do this anyway, and you're probably like bored by me having to go all these steps. So negative 2, negative 8 was the first step. I made a mistake. Negative 1, negative 7 was the next point. Looking back then, um, so that one's done. Now it's 0, negative 6. 0, which is right there. 0 on the x. Negative 6 on the y, which is right there. And the next two points... 1, negative 5, 2, negative 4. So remember that. <clears throat> 1, negative 5, 2, negative 4. So there's my points, and now I should do my long and proud line that goes on forever. Again, you should be using, in your graphs and pencil, you should also be using a ruler. Because um, actually when you do it with a ruler, you'll get a better line than I get. Well, I'm using this computer one. Actually, I did pretty good on this one, didn't I? It went through the points nicely. There's my line. Actually, I should extend it even further. This line should be going like the full grid. Going on each end, showing that it does go on forever. So there is my line for, and I should label it. What was the name of the graph? The name of the graph was here. Um, that, was the, that was the original equation, x minus y equals 6. I should, I should actually label what the question said, not what I rearranged it into. I should go by this, x minus y equals 6. So that's what I'll do. That's how I'll do it. x minus y equals 6 looks like that. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the next one. It's the same old thing. Let's follow our four steps. There's the equation. Y minus X equals 4. I want to get the Y by itself. Y minus X equals 4. Um, so our four steps. Get the Y by itself. The Y is being bugged by this X. How do we get rid of this X? Add X. Add X to the other side. The X's are gone. You're left with Y equals. Now, little hint about me 
and actually a little hint about what's going to work out in the future. You could just say 4 plus x, but can I just make a suggestion here? It's always nice to have the x first. So you can put y equals 4 plus x, but I don't know, it looks cooler, and again, because I can see what's coming ahead, I know that it's actually better to put the x in front. So um, again, if you like this, you can write like that. I prefer to write it x plus 4. So either way you like, but this is the better one because it has the x first. Okay, so we just then pick our favorite five numbers, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. We sub each of those in for x. So for negative 2, we get y equals minus 4. We sub in negative 2 into there, so y equals negative 2 plus 4. You're down 2, you're up 4, you are up 2. So when, y, when x is negative 2, y is positive 2. I'll use my little eraser trick. Instead of rewriting it all out, let's try negative 1. And erase what's in the brackets in the final answer. So instead of negative 2, let's put negative 1 in. Negative 1. Negative 1 plus 4. You're down 1, you're up 4. Positive 3. You put a 3 there. And let's do the same thing with 0. So for 0, when x is 0, sub that in. 0 plus 4 is 4. And we see our pattern. 2, 3, 4. This must be 5, that must be 6. You plot those points, <coughs> and you should end up getting negative 2. So what was the first point there? So quickly. Negative 2, positive 2, negative 1, positive 3. Negative 2, positive 2. But just use the same graph. Negative 2, positive 2. Negative 2, positive 2. And I already forgot what the other one was. Negative 1, positive 3. Negative 1, positive 3. Remember, x goes first, then y. And then. 0, 4, 1, 5, 2, 6. I'll remember that. 0, 4, 1, 5, 6. 1, come on, 1, 5, 2, 6. There we are, a nice line. And let's draw a nice forever line with arrows on either side of it going indicating it does go on forever. Let's see if I can do as good a job as last time. Ooh, a little slow down there. There we go. So there's my line. Let me maybe zoom out a little bit to see how it looks. There we go. That's that line right there. Okay, so um, when I name that line, it is, again, the name from the equation. It is y minus x equals 4. And when I label it, I use the one from the question, not the rearranged one. y minus x equals 4. All right. Uh, for these... I bother graphing them. I assume that you know how to graph them. I'll fill in the table for you, but the graphing part, I think you got that. No problem. <clears throat> the new thing here is rearranging the equation. So you have, let's we'll do practice with that. First step, you have x plus y equals 3 for this next equation. Um, I want to get, again, y by itself. So an x is bugging it. How do I get rid of x? Subtract x, subtract x. X's are gone. I'm left with y equals, now again, I prefer that you put the x first. Negative x plus 3. Now again, you could go y equals 3 minus x. It does look neater, um, but this way is going to help you out later on if you have the x first. Honestly, as long as you're comfortable with both and you understand that you can switch from one to the other, you're good. Okay. Um, you know, honestly, since we're just subbing numbers in, let's go with this one, which I know looks neater and easier to handle. 
and we're subbing in numbers. Okay, so we pick our favorite five, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. We sub negative two in for x, so for negative two, we get y equals three minus, this is why we do brackets, three minus negative two. Those of you who are sloppy would forget the negative sign, you'd get the wrong answer. Three minus negative two, a double sign, it's positive. Three plus two is five. So y is five for that one. Let's quickly put negative one in now. Negative one, that means that's gonna change that there. So for x being negative one, two negatives makes a positive. Three plus one is four, it's four. We sub a zero into here. And I know some of you can already see what's happening. We sub a zero into there, three minus zero is three. We see our pattern, five, four, three, two, one. There's your points, plot these on the graph, negative two, five, one, Negative one comma four, blow up, blow all these five points, draw a line, make it look good, show it to me in your notes. Okay, just gonna do this last one here, rearrange this one for you. X plus Y equals negative four, we need to get the Y by itself. X plus Y equals negative four. <clears throat> Getting the Y by itself, we need to, well, the Y is being bugged by the X. Subtract X, subtract X. The x's are gone, you get y equals, um, again you could do negative 4 minus x, but again, like I told you, it's kind of nicer and cooler if you put the x first. Let's go y equals negative x minus 4, I mean it's the same thing. So either of these two ways will work. Pick our favorite five, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. Which one do we want to use? Um, let's just go with this one. Since I always say that putting the X first is good. Let's actually follow that advice. So there's our machine, our equation. We're gonna put in our inputs. So for negative two, Y equals, now, Careful with the negative signs. You've already got a negative sign there. Now we're subbing in a negative two. Minus four. That's why the brackets are so important. Double sign, that becomes a plus. Plus two minus four. You're up two, then you're down four. You're down two. So y is negative two. All right, continue with the saving paper way. Let's pretend that was never there, and let's try it for negative one. So, for negative one, let's put a negative one into here. Again, signs are the same, it becomes a positive. You're up one, you're down four. You're down three, down three. Now let's sub it in for zero. So for zero, Zero in for x. Negative zero is just zero. So there is no such thing as negative zero, it just becomes zero. Zero minus four is negative four. And we can see a pattern. We're going down by one. I know something, are we going bigger? Well, no, they're negative. We're actually getting smaller. Negative two, negative three, negative four, going down to negative five, going down to negative six. You plot those five points, you draw a line, show it to me, label it again with the equation, and I will check it. That's it. I think hopefully you're getting good at these now. The only, again, the only thing new in this lesson was that you have to get the Y by itself and that's what you have to do with these three. So again what you need to show is uh, the table sum work so the table of values filled in with the five numbers ten numbers in total five X's five Y's uh, some work and the properly gr drawn and labeled graph um, for this one for this one for this one you can do it in the same graph paper save paper let's not waste it Alright, talk to you later. Bye. Bye.